Jesus died, got raised from the dead. When he was raised from the dead, and, uh, and then he tells his disciples, I'm going to go be with my father, but I'm leaving you all power and authority, and I'm going to use the word here, and the privilege of using my name. The privilege of using my name, which I really honor the fact, and I thank God that we can pray in the name of Jesus. If you pray in the name of Yeshua, it works just as good. Okay, so... You know, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Yeshua. Whatever you're comfortable with, then that is fine. And, um, and so we need to understand our authority. And he's, all power and authority is given to us, not some, so that we can lay hands on the sick and who knows, they might get healed. No, man. The word says they shall recover. Not if, ands, or buts, or all that kind of stuff. What it says is that they shall recover. We're going to lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. But what if they don't get healed? It's not scriptural for them not to get healed. Think about that. You know, you may not see the immediate manifestation right there by, if you're praying at the grocery store, but they might be healed by the time they get to the parking lot. You know, I remember praying for this guy. He'd never been around anybody that heals, but I, I've known his wife for years, and she's a, a wild, crazy, awesome, charismatic on fire woman for God and they had just gotten married he was a believer and spoke in tongues and different things but he'd never seen a miracle and so I'm telling the story and this testimony about oh, and then he goes um I have that same problem I said okay let's let's pray sure he thinks I'm going to pray when I go home <laughs> no so I go around the table he stands up and I, I lay hands on my on his shoulders or I get behind him actually I lay hands on his shoulder and, and I said, now say thank you, Jesus. And, you know, so thank you, Jesus. And, and they, were, they were healed, you know, from what you could tell at that point. So he goes, tells his wife, I'll be back in a few minutes. So he goes, sneaks off to the bathroom, thinking I'm not watching. I have, like, eagle eyes on stuff like this. And he's going. <laughs> and he's doing anything and everything he could to make it hurt. It was so cute. So when he came back, I kind of razzed him a little bit, and I'm like, hmm, so you really are healed? He goes, yeah, really am healed. <laughs> and he had never seen it before. But see, when you've seen it, you can't deny it, and, uh, which is so fun. And I want to really encourage you, if the fir first person, fifth or first 50 people you pray for, they don't get healed, just don't quit. Right. You know, you don't know that they're not healed now. I know my mom would pray for people with cancer, and they would die, Okay. You know, maybe like the first 10. But my mom had one of the greatest um, anointings in the area of, of cancer, of anybody. But the first few was to discourage her from doing that because the enemy knows what's in your future more than we know what's in our future. I read something the other day and I said, the enemy wants, your de you, the enemy wants you dead. He doesn't necessarily want you to kill you, but he wants you dead. Why? He is scared of you. Oh, you're in Texas now. He's scared of you. <laughs> he is scared of you when you get a hold of this knowledge to go from here and start seeing people healed like you've never seen people healed before. He does not want you to do that. He's going to do, there's opportunities of people not coming here. There's, we only had seven, I think it didn't show, which is less than 10%, which is good. And, but they'll, they'll make it back in, October, in uh, April. But see, what God wants to do, he wants to see how determined you are. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger, and that's an understatement. And I'm going to be doing a television show here in the next, sometime between now and October. It'll air next year about what, you know, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. But see, the thing is, time, uh, opportunities make you stronger. Trey was having a lot of difficulty getting here. He made it to the airport and, and to change planes, and he saw them pulling away, and they wouldn't let him on. So he got to spend the night in the airport. Hallelujah. Till 9 this morning, but he made it. And so we're communicating last night, and, I, and it's like, boy, this is going to be an amazing chapter in the book, he says. See, that's the kind of attitude you need to have because, see, God is going to use situations like that, and he's going to use situations to put it in a book. To make you stronger, okay? Now, those of you in particular that are getting ordained, I want to encourage you to have some people around you, at least five, 
Ask them to be your intercessors. Very important. And, and so when you understand that what God wants to do, he's going to use you. But you know what? You don't need to stand alone. You need to have people praying for you. Had a situation happen. I talked to a young man this morning um, who is the last chapter in Just Don't Quit. And uh, he says, I, got he says, I only told you what I'm doing. He only told me what he was doing. And he says, because I didn't want anybody talking me out of it. He says, you're the only one that believes in my dreams, which is really sad. And um, so anyway, he said, um, he says, I, I didn't even tell my friend. You know, that, and so his friend woke up this morning and says, I don't know what you're doing, but you are right where God wants you to do. He was in Hawaii yesterday in Green Bay, Wisconsin today. And only I knew that. I mean, his dad knew it, but thinks he's crazy. <laughs> I think it's so fun that God has a, he has the, the final say. Yeah. You know, when his son gets signed on, hopefully this week, with the Green Bay Packers, and then next year buys, buys his dad a house. <laughs> Isn't that good? He'll go, I guess Joan was right. Yes. <laughs> That's right. But it's a really neat story how God brought, raised him up. But see, we need to understand that when, when we pray for somebody, we don't need to go, oh, God, oh, maybe God, I hope it maybe it, it God is at your will to maybe, if you, if you only if you want to heal them. Oh, that, that just makes God want to throw up. Okay? It's like, show me that in the word. Okay? It is God's will to heal everybody. But what if they want to go? They can go healed. It, they don't have to get 100% healed to go to heaven. But you know what? You know, sometimes they just they put a lot of emphasis on that. Like, oh, I just want to go. And that's fine. If you want to go home, I'm not ready. Chris is planning on living to be 111. And so I was talking to somebody today, and I think it was you that your dad lived to be 112. Grandfather, Grandfather lived to be 112. He got you beat. That's all right. And see, what's happening is I believe, even though the world says at 65, which there's several of us, that we're wasting air. I'm not wasting air. I'm using all my air, okay? And, and half of my husband's, but that's another story too. <laughs> right, Kelly? Right, yeah, okay. But we need to understand your authority. We need to grasp hold that it's not our responsibility to heal. That's really good. Our responsibility is to lay hands on the sick, let him do it. Let him heal through us. My hands are anointed of God, and I am absolutely blown away by what I see. But you know what? So are your hands. He's looking for hands that will come out of this that will come out of this, like sitting on them. He wants the hands to come out to be free, to lay hands on sick people so that they can recover. I love, and I told him, I said, all of a sudden, you're going to have start having supersonic hearing. Well, what do you mean by that? Okay, you're sitting in a crowded restaurant, talk, 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 and somebody over there says, man, I got a headache. And you go, There they are. <laughs> there go the hands. They're armed and dangerous. <laughs> and see, this is what I want to happen. Now, if you're sitting there and all of a sudden your hands start going like that, it is not my fault. <laughs> but it's a prompting of the Holy Spirit. And, you're, and seriously, you're going to go, who said that? You may want to walk through the restaurant only and get a word of knowledge, leading of the Holy Spirit, things like that and lay hands on them. 